Colin Carlyle, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Many thanks, my pleasure. Colin, this year uh, work starts on the building of the European Spallation Source. Correct. Uh, you were Director General for many years. Yes. Um, what do you hope will come out of it at the end of the day? I mean, it's going to take a while to build, but what, what, you know, what's it going to be its lasting legacy? Well, two things. And they are apparently not related, but the first one is that this will be the first big research facility that has been built outside of the three big countries in the European Union. And Sweden, with a population of nine million people, has been granted the location after quite a lot of uh, campaigning, uh, a pleasurable period, I must say. But Sweden is not normally a place where big facilities are built. And therefore, what we are doing here is trailblazing so that the whole of the European Union can actually contribute to science in Europe and it brings everyone together. So it's not a time to continue to build big facilities in the big countries. And if you look at where they are, they're in France, they're in Britain and they're in Germany with CERN sitting on the border with Switzerland. Now we can think of, and you can see it happening, European Light Source Initiative uh, being in uh, Hungary and the Czech Republic. You can see this happening. So that's the first thing, is, uh, is equality within Europe and also spreading the European ideal. And I'm very much in favor of that. The second thing is it will be the world's best facility for the understanding of materials. Now, materials, they are not the sexy, attractive areas of Higgs bosons uh, or black holes. They've got all the best pictures. So the pictures of galaxies colliding uh, and the data sets from CERN and uh, the, the publicity around CERN, they get all of that publicity. But actually in the middle, in the area of materials, in the materials of everyday life, and if we look around us, we see everywhere materials. Your computer screen, uh, liquid crystal. I've worked on liquid crystals using neutrons, which is what ESS will produce. Um, my phone, um, you know, where do they come from? Well, they come, in this case, from the Apple shop. There are other phones available, of course. Um, but this is uh, an iPhone. And if you look at this, that screen, the very low energy light, light emitting diodes. The battery, nano material lithium batteries. They will charge up in 25 minutes and they will take a day and a half to charge down. And the development of that material, I was involved in lithium ionic conduction using neutrons. And so the materials of many of the devices that are so necessary in order to sustain the life that we have nowadays, we only understand them by the use of neutrons, by the use of x-rays, by the use of electron diffraction or nuclear magnetic resonance. And without that underlying research, we cannot produce better materials. And without better materials able to be handed over to our industry, it's not us who are involved in designing or uh, developing these, it's others. And we in Europe will become followers and not leaders. And that's why it's so important. And material science covers everything from the, um, the better bio-compatible uh, materials on hip joints or on t teeth implants uh, to the understanding of pharmaceuticals and how they lock into uh, proteins which have got a malign effect to, uh, to electrical conductors, uh, to magnetic materials, to uh, how drugs transmit through the skin, uh, to engineering materials, to the understanding of cultural heritage, to how stone degrades with time, how paper degrades with time. So it's such a vast range uh, of topics which can be understood. 
using such facilities. And will this make, I suppose, Europe a world leader? Yes. Just as simple as that? Yes. Uh, science yes. fiction to science fact? In, yes. In, um, yes, it in will. Effect. It will. Because this facility, uh, with input from the University of Huddersfield, Sue Kilcoyne, for example, is studying biocompatible materials using neutrons. Bob Swinsky, uh, who has been uh, pushing very hard uh, for the European Spallation Source in many, many ways, uh, and developing an accelerator team here in Huddersfield, all have contributed to the fact that we are now building the European Spallation Source in Sweden. Uh, it requires the input from many, many people. And Bob, in particular, has been uh, full of energy in driving uh, this forward. And, and how will it work, not particularly on a day-to-day -day basis, but um, will, if somebody has an innovation or, or an innovation is spotted, will they be invited to come and use the facility? Will grants be made available? How, how will it work on, well, you know, on such a level? It's used mainly by academic researchers. Academic researchers who are dealing uh, with materials in all their glory, um, but they are very close to a commercial uh, industry, very close. What will happen with innovations is there will be innovations on the scientific front, and that will be published, and a lot of the work which is being done by university groups is supported by industry, and so industry who support research groups are able then to take the first bite of the cherry, let's say. The other way that innovations will pay off is that in the investment of such a large amount of money and pushing things to the limit, you actually do things that have not been done before. You demand of industry a certain standard that they've not had demanded of them before. And that can be precision, or it can be purity, or cleanliness, or it can be many things. But then what you're doing is you're producing things that have not been produced before, and innovations will flow in that way as well. From our point of view, the one thing which has not really happened in the past, and which we want to do, is we want to harness these innovations. If you look at the CERN website, they say, we gave the world the World Wide Web, and they did. They gave it. And that, of course, is a very benevolent thing to do. But I do suspect that if the clock were able to be turned back, uh, they would say, we gave the world the World Wide Web, and we only charge 0 0.01 cents, pence per click of the mouse. Then they would have been able to fund the whole of research on the globe for the next 100 years. And I think that big science facilities have got to look afresh at innovation. First of all, is there responsibility? In the past, it wasn't. It was, well, our job is to do research, uh, and those who wish to take advantage can do. I think there's got to be much more of a handshake, much more of a, of a proactive a way. commercial side to it, then? Commercial, but making it available. Uh, and scientists don't want to do that, but what has to be done, and that's what we will do, is we will create the links between the researchers and those who could benefit from the results of the research. You're due to receive uh, your honorary award from the university today. Mm. It's a lovely day for it. Yeah. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you very much. I'm sure that we will. I'm here with my wife and daughter, and we intend to have a little party, enjoy Huddersfield, enjoy the Pennines, um, and uh, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. It's a privilege. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.